There are 190 LEGO builds that could potentially be coming LEGO sets, and today we're going to be taking a detailed look at those. In addition to that, I've got a new handy dandy tool, and that is the updated periodic table of the LEGO colors. The new potential sets can be seen on BrickLink.com, and you can actually see some of the existing ones here in the LEGO City. There's the modular construction site, the vintage bowling alley, the 1950s diner, Hot Shots, which is currently in the amusement park just across from the carousel. The Eight Studs House, which is right over here by the airstrip. The Venetian Houses. And also the Mountain View Observatory, which is on the highest peak right over top of the zoo. And there's actually way more than that, and there's more coming out in the future. In fact, we're going to find out what the new sets are on August 23rd. We're going to talk about those shortly, but first, let's talk about LEGO colors, because there's definitely a lot of them. And you know what's funny about LEGO colors? For the most part, they actually have two different names, which can make it rather confusing. Luckily for us, there's a tool that will make LEGO colors pretty simple, and even better, there's an updated version that's easier to use and has way more colors. The periodic table of the LEGO Colors Volume 3 was issued here in 2023 and it features 75 different LEGO colors. And it's actually way easier to use. For example, LBG, a very common color. Known as light bluish gray on BrickLink or medium stone gray on LEGO. Yeah, that's sort of confusing. But luckily for us, this periodic table actually identifies both color names on the bottom of the periodic square there. In fact, it goes even further than that. Take a look at the ledger here. In the top left corner, it tells you if it's solid, metallic, glitter, milky, or transparent. It tells you the amount of sets that that color appeared in. Then you have the BrickLink name, LEGO name, and on the right side, you'll see the color IDs and also the year that the LEGO color was in production. I've been using my periodic table of the LEGO colors for years and it's come in super handy when it comes to sorting and also when it comes to ordering pieces from BrickLink and also the LEGO group. The fact that the colors have two different names is so confusing to me and there's no way I can memorize it all, especially when there are so many different colors. I love the updated version because the old version actually didn't identify the colors right in like the elemental square or the element square and I find that to be just magical that that was done because in the old version I had to like refer to the table on the right hand side of the like poster so this is just so much better. This product can be ordered from wlwyb.com and when you get to their website, click on the shop tab, you can see all of their different products. And actually have a discount code that can be applied to any of these products. It's BRICKSY in all caps, and that will save you 10% upon checkout. The periodic table retails for $50 and you get free international shipping. And once again, you're gonna have a coupon code that can be applied right here on the right hand side. And it is BRICKSY in all caps, and that should automatically apply a 10% discount. Once again, that can be applied to any product on their website. I am an affiliate for this company, so using that discount code does help out the channel. And apparently, the first batch of these new periodic tables are actually hand-numbered out of a 1,000, so that's pretty cool. I use this tool all the time, and it is super duper handy. All right, let's look at some awesome LEGO sets. So to check these out, you want to go to BrickLink.com. This is the website with all of those funky color names. You're going to hover over Programs and go to Current Programs. That's going to bring you to this landing page here where it's the BrickLink Designer Program. You can click on Series 1 or Series 2. Series 1 is already sort of set in stone. These are the five finalists. We've got the Old Train Shed, the Mountain Fortress, the Parisian Restaurant, the General Store Wild West, and also the Snack Shack. Now these ones here are going to be available for purchase on February or in February of 2024. Now Series 2, unfortunately, we cannot vote on, but the finalists are going to be decided on August 23rd. Even though we can't vote on them right now because we missed the deadline, I still want to showcase some of these sets. What we're going to do is just click on some that I think are, are really cool, like we've got everything. We've got airplanes, we've got alpine adventures, we've got insane looking houses like this one right here. The Albatross 1 Uncharted Planet Scout Craft, like... There are just all sorts of things here. The interesting thing about it is the fact that it's from all different teams. Like there's character builds, there's modular buildings, there's pirate ships, there's moonwalk, like there's the moon footprint, there's residential buildings, there's mushroom buildings. There's all sorts of stuff. There's 
crazy train stations. Oh my gosh, in my previous clips, I forgot to feature the the Studgate train station, which is uh, in the amusement park. Can you believe it? I can't believe I forgot to feature that one. I worked so hard on integrating it into the Lego city and then I just forget about it. Are you serious? Oh man. But either way, I wouldn't doubt it. There's some more that I have in my collection that I forgot to uh, point out there. I hope there isn't. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many cool different ones here. Like, man, what I'm doing is going through and I'm just taking a look at them and I'm opening them in new tabs if I think they're worth having a look at, but I'll probably miss a whole bunch of them. But yeah, there's lots of different stuff like F1 cars, elephant enclosure at the zoo, hardware store. It's crazy. I always lean toward like the modular buildings. Those are the things that always pique my interest. But you know, if you vote, like I know you can't vote now, but if you vote for all modular buildings and more and more modular buildings come out, it's like, where are you going to put all these things? So you got to sort of be conscious of that when you're voting uh, for these Bricklink Designer Program sets. What's that? A dice tower. Oh, that's interesting. You know, like D&D, &D, when you roll the dice and they go down the dice, like you put them in the tower and then they, they roll. Yeah, I've, I've never played D&D, &D, but I just finished watching that D&D uh, &D movie. That was pretty good. The one with Chris Pine. I think that's his name, right? Chris Pine? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, really cool uh, movie. Really well done. Quite funny as well. But yeah, so many different things here. Look, look at this uh, Brickstein Castle. Whoa. Rusty Canyon. Just like a bunch of cars. I think it's difficult because when you go through these, you got to be careful not to love every single one of them. I think you've got to put a lot of thought into it and sort of choose you know, maybe like 10 or 12 that you really love and give those ones the hard eyes. You can't just go around and say, oh, I love this, I love this, I love this, I love every single one of them. I think you've got to be really selective. And I think that's how everybody should treat this, just to make sure that it gets done correctly and the ones that we actually really want to move on to funding, you know, get approved. And that's the way to do it for sure. I feel like there's not a whole lot of awareness about this program. Like it's really well advertised on the BrickLink website, but I feel like after I purchased these and showcase them on my channel, some people are like, oh, where, where'd you get those? When'd you get those? How did you get those? And that's part of the reason why I sort of wanted to make this video as well. With that said, uh, I think they are only producing 10,000 of these sets. So they're a quite a limited run and they become very popular. And once they sell out, they tend to go up in value because they're only available for a, like a pre-order window for a very short period of time. And then once the 10,000 units or X amount of units that they're offering sell through, then they're no longer available. And then the only way you can get them is on the secondary market. Luckily, when they do sell them, they actually limit them like per customer. So you can only order a max of, I think it's like two per household, two of each set per household. I think the last wave was actually one per household. And I ended up getting all of them. There's actually one that I didn't showcase and it's the Winter Village Chalet. I think it's like a ski chalet. And I uh, haven't built that one yet. So maybe that will go in the new updated Winter Village that I'll build this year. Got the Alpine Adventure here. I think that one looks pretty neat. I don't know if it ended up getting a hard eyes for me. Like I love all the different part usage and the waterfall and everything, but I don't know where I would actually put that in my city. This house just looks insane. Like, whoa, look at this like solar panel block here on top of that like angled section of the house. That's crazy. Whoa. It's nice when you open them up, you can actually flip through the different pictures. Here's that Uncharted Planet Scout Craft. Something a little bit different, hey? Eh? Oh, it even comes with minifigures with space torsos. This is a really nice looking modular building called Glass Studio. Oh, they have like, this is like where they're blowing glass maybe? There's just a bunch of glass items within that you can buy. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. That's an interesting idea. That's quite the interior as well. Yeah, there he is, blowing glass. Crow's Nest Medieval Message Tower. I always find there's lots of great medieval stuff in the Bricklink Designer Program, like submissions. This one's definitely different. It's like a horse and a knight sculpture. This thing just looks wild. Like I said, medieval stuff galore. Wow, this one has a lot going on for it, that's for sure. Here we go, the Interceptor. Everyone wants more ships, right? It's classic. Look at all the cannons on that thing. I like the way they did the sails as well. Oh yeah, and as you look at these, you can see the creator right up top here, right? Because these are all fan designers, so it's people like me and you who know how to use Bricklink Studio who are submitting these designs. 
Brick Cross train station. Whoa, that train station looks so neat. Look at the roof on it and this like building on the side here. End of Dark Ages, it says. <laughs> That's such a neat concept. I love that train station. It looks really clean. I don't need another train station is the issue. But this one looks super nice. See, this one here is done by Brent Waller. Brent Waller has done a ton of different designs and he's really well known in the Lego mock community, that's for sure. And this is a really neat looking Lego arcade. Oof, very cool. I foresee this one doing quite well, I think. The Night Grand Pavilion. This looks like a nice little one that wouldn't be very expensive. The Medieval Town. The Crimson Outpost, the Pirate Island done by Brick Jester. Look at this train and like that really neat looking truss bridge there. This one here is called the Logging Railway. Brick Lab, modular building. Wow, this one has a really nice design to it. Oh, it even has an elevator in the back there. I'm sure it has all sorts of interior details as well. Quite the lavatory. Here's another Imperial ship. Lego needs to make more ships, don't you think? Whether they're pirate ships or imperial ships. I don't think they've done an imperial ship in a long time. Like they've given us some uh, pirate ships, but not imperial ships. So maybe this is our chance. The modern forest house looks quite attractive, doesn't it? Look at that angled roof. I'm always a huge fan of the angled roofs. And I just like how modern this one looks. A hardware store. There's a great idea for a modular building. Hey, I wonder what the 2024 modular building will be. Maybe it'll be a hardware store. No, I don't know. But we've got some really good modular buildings out of the BrickLink Designer Program. There's some that I didn't even get, uh, like the Lego store, and that one actually looked really good. And this one here is the Alley Corner. Oh, it's quite the corner build. Look at that. Oh, a Chinese restaurant. Oof, look at all the different part usage on that. That's very neat. I love all the different colors as well. The dark red masonry in there, and quite the uh, nice interior as well. Oh, another one of those crazy looking modern homes. Look at that thing. It's got uh, water flowing underneath it. This is going to be a tough vote this year. Like, I wonder which of these designs is going to get approved. This one looks really good. Medieval Street. Wow, there are so many different people out there creating such interesting medieval designs. The Island Retreat. Oh, this one just belongs like in my mountain range there by the campground with the Ninjago Temple. Henry's Watermill. That one looks like the medieval blacksmith, doesn't it? Just a little bit more modernized, maybe, with like that pad that it sits on. Here we go, the Italian Villa. Ooh, I like like the vineyard on the uh, side there. And the roof design with all of those colorful cylinders. The Gate of Brickenstein Castle. Looks like quite the gate. You know, this is a smaller one, but I really like it. And the nice thing about the smaller ones is well, they're a little bit cheaper than some of the big ones that get produced, right? I just really like the look of that little mini trailer there that could be towed around the Lego City. Futuristic City Landscape. Look at this thing. Whoa. It's almost like a micro scale, right? Yeah, definitely a micro scale build. Old Town Bank. There you go. That's a little bit different. More of like a Western feel, I guess, right? Look at this gingerbread house. That thing is insane. It's honestly just a little bit too much for me, but there's lots of great stuff going on inside there. The art studio. So many modular buildings. How do you narrow it down? Oh man. Black fortune pirate ship. There we go. We had a couple imperial ships and now we have a pirate ship. Oh man, this one is so nice. The magical village over the bridge. I love that bridge. That is so neat. I would put that in my uh, winter village. That one looks super cool. I love the way they did the ice too, but what color is that? Oh my gosh, I need my periodic table. The forest citadel, oh wow, this is crazy. Oh man, that would look super good on the race platform, wouldn't it? Let's go back to the uh, other shot there. I like that when you could just see it. Look at that. That is just a pleasure. Here's a French mansion and the Artist Cafe, the University House. Oof, this one's got a lot going on for it on the outside and I'd imagine in the inside as well. Plus look at all those minifigures. Very nice looking cafe. So there are so many that we could have a detailed look at but we would be sitting here all day. I really encourage you to come check out this website and maybe even learn how to use the BrickLink Studio because that's the program that everybody is using to create these designs and submit their like 
submissions or their designs to this. And then you could potentially have a Lego set that actually gets built like or manufactured by Lego. And I think it's so cool that BrickLink and also Lego give us the opportunity of actually like being able to design sets and have them potentially manufactured and distributed by Lego. Because that's how this works. Lego takes care of the manufacturing and distributing. You take care of the design. And then BrickLink takes care of like the sale and also the crowdfunding of it. Such a cool program. So everybody, if you're a fan of some of the sets that you saw in the Lego room at the beginning of this video and some of the sets that you saw on the BrickLink website, make sure you head over to BrickLink.com to learn about how that program works and make note of the dates because those sets will be available for a very short window. Yeah, and they're gonna be uh, hard to find, that's a guarantee. Also, maybe you wanna educate yourself on how to use the studio program so you can actually submit designs. I think that's so cool, and it's something that I still need to do. I'm sorry that I was a little bit late in regards to that and didn't show like the voting process. Sort of dropped the ball there a little bit, but it is what it is. Also, remember to check out uh, the periodic table of Lego colors. Pretty cool product and use discount code BRIXIE to save upon checkout. Thank you so much for coming on by. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for some more great stuff, and farewell.